I'm talking about five weird things that I do to make my voice sound better and last longer. Let's dive in. That was a really cheesy beginning. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Jesse Carroll, professional voice actor and coach. And today we're talking about five weird things that I do to make my voice sound better and last longer. And make sure you stay all the way to the end of the video where I share the weirdest thing that I do. It's weird. Okay, starting at the top at number one, we have the Vocal Mist Nebulizer. Now you're asking yourself, what is a nebulizer? A nebulizer takes liquid like isotonic saline solution, which goes in here and it turns it into a mist and you breathe this in. What it does is it relaxes your vocal folds. So when you're doing a lot of voiceover, your voice gets kind of rough and hoarse by the end of it. So if you use this before you start your day, whether you're doing a lot of talking, a lot of singing, or doing a lot of voiceover like me, this will keep your voice fresher, longer, and it'll help combat against that hoarse feeling and that sound where it starts to get a little rough by the end of the day. I'll actually use this a couple times a day and you just strap it on and breathe it in. And you could just do it while you're doing some cleaning or some editing between voiceovers, however you wanna do it. So this is what I like to use. This is number one, Vocal Mist Nebulizer. And next at number two, numero dos, we have I do warm-ups, but I do singing warm-ups, and I don't sing. Now you're probably asking yourself, why would a voiceover actor who doesn't sing do singing warm-ups instead of voiceover warm-ups? And here's the reason. See, voice actors usually do vocal warm-ups that are like stage theater warm-ups, where you're just kind of talking, you're doing a lot of banging on your resonators, you know, you're waking up your body because that's where you get your sound from, making noises like huh, 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 and that's not enough. Especially for me, I like to have a lot of resonance at different octaves and the one way to do that is do singing warm-ups because the difference is when singers do warm-ups they do scales so they'll do something like a really low register voice like uh, bring it all the way to their head voice and that wakes up all the resonators in your body it gets you used to making different sounds with your voice and it makes it a lot more flexible so if you listen to my voice really clearly you'll hear actually a lot of different octaves in my voice when I talk you'll hear a low register a medium and a high all in one so doing these warm-ups helps my voice sound a little more unique than usual so if you're looking for a warm-up I highly recommend doing a singing warm-up the one that I'm doing right now I switch them all the time is I just follow a simple singing warm-up on YouTube just type into YouTube Jeff Mathena men's vocal warm-up or female vocal warm-up. He has one for each, they're both great. So follow along with that. I do a warm-up, but for singers. Coming in hot at number three, which follows this one, is I do 50 tongue twisters, but with a catch. Most people, when they do tongue twisters, they try to get through them as quick as they can. They'll say things like, Peter Piper picked a pack of pick buppers, better pepper, you know what I mean? How much wood, 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 chuck, chuck, wood, wood, chuck? I don't do it like that. There's no point in doing that. The point of doing tongue twisters is to wake up your brain when you're saying difficult words, that they're difficult when they're put together, and to wake up your resonators in your mouth. So I will say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. I'll say it slow, but I'll hit every consonant as hard as I can. I do 50 of them and I do them slow and I hit the consonants hard. That was number three. Tongue twisters, but slow and hit those consonants. Coming in at number four, I do not eat dairy until the end of the day when I'm done doing voiceover. Now the reason for that is a singer actually turned that on to me because dairy, it produces a lot of mucus in your mouth and in your throat and it kind of gunks up the sound. In fact, if I even put cheese on an omelet for breakfast. I'll find that my voice gives out sooner, it'll get hoarse faster, and it'll generally just sound like shit. So if you're having issues with your voice and all, and you're not sure what it is, eliminate dairy out of your diet completely to start with to see if that's it. I add in a little bit of dairy at night because I don't eat sugar, but I love ice cream, so the closest thing I can have for that is I'll take Greek yogurt and put some protein powder in it with some blueberries and some bananas chopped up and I mix it all up. Mwah! Super healthy, tastes like pudding and kind of like a banana split. All in one. Yeah. Anyway, that's my one treat at the end of the day. I like it. So that's when I have my dairy. So it doesn't mess up my voice at the end of the day. Now, coming in hot at number five, the absolute weirdest thing I do is I tape my mouth shut while I sleep. Okay, so when I tell people that I tape my mouth shut when I sleep, a lot of people are like, that's insane. How do you not die while you sleep? Well, actually your body's really, really smart. So when you tape your mouth shut, all it does is stop your mouth from opening. You're fine breathing out your nose. See, I used to not even be able to breathe out my nose very well at all because I was a habitual mouth breather. And as soon as I started taping my mouth shut when I was sleeping and only breathing through my nose when I was sleeping, I got better sleep, I had more energy the next day, and I'd also stop waking up to pee in the middle of the night too. It's weird how that works, but it does. I don't know if that's too much information, 
solution, but I'm telling you. But the number one benefit that I found from it and why I started doing it in the first place is because before I started taping my mouth shut, I would wake up and my throat would just be dry as hell. And then my vocal cords would feel dry. And when I talk, it'd be kind of like hoarse. It just didn't sound great. And it would take a while for me to get going in voiceover. I'd have to do a lot of warm ups, drink a ton of water. And an easy fix for that was I just started taping my mouth shut. And as soon as I did, aside from the better sleep and not peeing in the middle of the night, and I mean, not getting up to pee in the middle of the night, of course, I don't pee in my bed. I'm 40 years old and having more energy the next day. Aside from all those benefits, I also woke up and my mouth was hydrated. My voice sounded great. It was ready to go right out of the box. I barely needed to do a warm up, but I still do. It made my voice sound better. It made it last longer. Out of all the things that I'm doing, if you're a pro VO, if you're a professional voiceover actor and you have issues with your voice ever, I'm telling you right now, tape your mouth shut when you sleep. That will make a world of difference. Now, here's how you do it, okay? There's a couple ways. One, you can do it the expensive way and just go down to your local pharmacy and get a roll of surgical tape and just cut off a little piece of that surgical tape and just tape right here, right in the middle of your mouth. Just just like a little like, just a little Charlie Chaplin mustache size and just put it right there. So when you're sleeping, if you absolutely need to breathe out your mouth, your, your body will breathe out the corners of your mouth, but most likely it won't, but it'll just make you feel a little safer until you get used to it. Now, if you're hardcore like me, I tape my whole mouth shut, but I use this stuff. This is hostage tape. Now what this is, it's a group of guys, they create to this tape, I'm not trying to sell you on. I just, I like the product. I'm not sponsored or anything. Um, and it's got a breathable adhesive. It's like athletic tape. And you put this over your mouth or you tape your mouth shut, but in a pinch, if your body like freaks out while you're sleeping, you can breathe through this. But generally you don't. I just tape my mouth shut with it and just stay shut. But it does add that level of safety. And it's super easy. You just pull it apart. Good to go. So that is my weird list. Those are the things that I do. If you're a professional voice actor and you've got some other weird things that you want to share that you do, please hit me up in the comments below. Let's hear about it. No more fighting. Let's collaborate. Let's get together on it. All right. That's it. That's all. That's my list. That is my five weird things that I do to make my voice sound better and last longer. So if you enjoyed this video and like this kind of content, please hit the like and subscribe button for more voiceover content. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, also, if you're a brand new at voiceover or you're looking to get started, check out the links below to find out different ways that you can work with me or take my voiceover course on how to go from knowing nothing about voiceover all the way to being a working professional. That's it. That's all. See you in the next 